That is just gorgeous. Unbelievable. I'm up here on the edge of the Tusher Mountains, just south of uh, Richfield, Utah. This is crazy rough terrain. I'm surprised there's such a nice road in here. This is graded and totally passable in my Ford Escape. Just beautiful. So I spent the night back on the other side of that big knoll where the road goes down and it was right at 10,000 feet, a little over 10,000 feet. And it got down to just right about 30 degrees at night, 29, 30. Tons of game trail down in there. They probably run sheep and cows in here. And I'm not seeing any, they've all come to, gone down, but it's all private property. Apparently, I don't know about right off of this down in this drainage, but back up over on the other side. Just beautiful. Look at that. And uh, down there in the valley is Highway 89, where it runs, comes off in, of 70 and runs down through Marysville and continues on down. That's where I'm heading back down to there. Man, it's just gorgeous in here. Rugged, rough country and gorgeous. I can't just drive through nature with my windows up, listening to the radio or a book or whatever. I have to put the windows down and I have to listen and smell and hear everything outside like I'm walking through the woods. I, I, I feel... I feel like I didn't really experience it if I can't smell it and feel the cool air and hear the sounds outside. Even with the crunching of the tires and the sound of the engine, I need to to be in it, not watching it through a windshield. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but there's been many times I've driven, taken gorgeous drives through the mountains, just going fast, trying to get from point A to point B, not having time to stop, and I, I feel let down. I'm like... I, I just I don't I don't feel like I did anything but watch TV and uh, even though I was there I was looking at it through a windshield so coming up in here and taking this drive spending the night camping just cruising this getting out looking around putting the windows down this is fulfilling to me this is where I belong
Good. In my car? Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. So um, they said you're playing on me now. I mean, I'll just pull one to the right of you. Yeah, I'm just going to reposition so I'm a little bit more level. Right. But okay. yeah. All right. So yeah, I'll just pull into the right of you then, like running up against that tree. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then. Yeah, it doesn't matter. No, I know. I'm going to say, I'm like. I was just glad to get a campsite so I didn't have to go back looking on the Forest Service or the BLM land. Yeah, because that's what I was planning on going back to the disbursement site. And he was like, no, we can fit you in. There's a spot That's out exactly there. what he told me. Yeah, he's squeezing us in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll pull up on the other Yeah, side. if you want to share my fire, I've, I've got some briquettes going. I'm going to cook myself a baked pumpkin. No, yeah. I'll set up my thing. Yeah, no problem. Well, now I'm over here in Kodachrome Basin. Got my camp set up. You saw me make my dinner. That's a baked pumpkin. Just uh, take a pumpkin pie pumpkin that you would make a pie out of and carve it out like you saw. And uh, put some brats in it and some vegetables, whatever you want, some seasoning, and then bake it. I obviously, as you saw, bake it in a Dutch oven on the fire, on the coals. I cheated and used charcoal briquettes, which is better because you got better control of the the heat and you're not going to um, cause sparks to jump out though they have fire open fires allowed here but yeah look at this this is just amazing here let me flip this around and show you this is just at one of the little pull out so I'm spending the night here just gonna sleep in my car tonight I was gonna try to get into some BLM land or some Forest Service land and camp again in my hammock but it was uh, just getting too late. 
by the time I got off the mountain. Walk over here and look up the road. I, I think I'm gonna come back in here in the dark at midnight-ish. Hopefully these clouds pull out. It's a new moon tonight. It won't even rise until I think two or three. Um, so I'm gonna come back around, come back out here at about midnight and shoot from right over in here, looking north at the North Star and probably do a star trail and uh, get some of the Andromeda galaxy over some of these spires. So this is just really cool in here. Got about an hour before my food's ready, so I uh, just jetted over here really quick. I was hoping the light was going to come back out of those clouds. If it was, I was going to grab my camera and photograph, but but I got over here a little bit too late. There's some really cool spires in there. Yep, I think that's where I'm going to go is hike back in there. Just poke around back in there. There's a lot of neat places in here to photograph from, so that sunset's looking good. Just beautiful, isn't it? Well, it's eight o'clock, pretty much dark, and my pumpkin, my dinner is finally done. Check this out. I've let it, it's been sitting for a few minutes, but there's Two brats in there as you saw and carrots and onions just yummy stuff and I'm gonna sit down and eat this I was hoping to have it done sooner but I got here way late went over and photographed the sunset and that but yep I'll be eating this I'll be eating this with my spoon and uh, and the chopsticks but I'm gonna sit down and eat my dinner so that's a baked pumpkin so good <laughs> Just so yummy. There's still a little bit of leftovers in here. Mm. I am so stuffed. Just can't quit eating it. The seasoning I put in it was just a mixture of um, pepper, salt, garlic powder, um, basil, and some cumin. I just put it in a, an old. Uh, one of those old uh, shaker things that I had and carry it with carry it with me when I go on trips. And, uh, and then the brats really help season it. I can't quit. It's so good. You see how, how it just falls apart. You know when it's done, when the outside is all browned like that? And it's just gotten squatty. And you pop the lid and feel it, and if the meat's all soft, then it's good. But, so yummy. So I'm uh, going to wrap this up and go chill for a bit in my car and then walk down the road and photograph the night sky. Start about 10 o'clock. It should be dark enough by then. Um, this time of year it's nice because you can start a little bit earlier and uh, see what I get. So, so I'm just sitting out here. Brought my little camp chair with me. And uh, found a composition of one of these big sandstone monoliths, and I'm doing a half an hour exposure over it, looking uh, south, sorry, north. <laughs> the Big Dipper's uh, behind it, so the North Star should be right above it to the right. Um, we'll see. I I I walked in and couldn't find my tracks weird in the dark it's always everything's always different in the dark and uh, I don't know I just I couldn't see my tracks I had a spot picked that I wanted to shoot from and I ended up walking really close to these big towers this one's cool when I get done with this exposure I'm gonna poke around some more while it's processing <laughs> when you do long exposures like this of um, more than 30 seconds turn on the long exposure noise reduction on your camera it will make them look a lot better so i've got my red light on here so it doesn't blind me so much but it's it's nice i don't even have a jacket on i brought a little jacket with me but sure is a big different from last night last night it was 30 degrees by this time and 
and uh, never got colder than that, but it's still every bit of probably 60, 65 in here. <laughs> so, pretty cool. So, here's what I got of that 30 minute exposure with the star trails of the um, the uh, North Star, you could see a car went by, which was just perfect and lit up that that big rock face, and just enough that made it really look nice. I really like how that one turned out. This next one also wasn't bad. There was a lot of clouds, a lot of just too many clouds to get some great sky, but I really liked how it turned out with the the atmosphere in the sky and those spires sticking up. Good morning. It's a little brisk. It's about 37 degrees. Uh, check this out. What's going on behind me? Beautiful sunrise right up here in Kodachrome Basin State Park in Utah. Oh, that light's getting better. I better get back to work. <laughs> so I hiked around here this morning looking for a specific angle looking east and found this I really like it this is what I just got you can see how I've cropped in there I wanted that spire to be right there in the in that side and the sunrise coming up over there plus in the distance you can see that other spire way out there really like this I didn't have a lot of time last night to scout around I came here in the dark and shot from literally I'm pretty positive I was right over there by that dead tree yeah right in there by that dead tree when I was photographing last night for my last shots everything looks so different in the dark man that sunrise is just looking spectacular I need a little more color over on this side, and I don't know if I'm going to get it, but I like what I've got. It's so pretty in here. Right at the base of these. All right, I better get back to shooting again. I'm still poking around here in Kodachrome Basin. I got up as it was just getting light and was out photographing by seven. Get the sunrise. I'm just poking around in various places. I really like this shot behind me. It's a pretty cool shot. It's a. Uh, so, what I've done is I'm photographing the yucca plant right there, vertical format with that spire behind me. Let me show you what I got. So what I'm doing is I'm going to focus stack those. I focused out on the spire, focused in the middle area, and then on the yucca plant in the foreground. Uh, it should make a pretty cool shot. It would be better if there were some clouds back in there, but, but the clouds are all over to the east still. So there's just some really neat stuff in here. Just all the campers, there's all the campgrounds are full and nobody's out walking around. They're all like sleeping in or something. <laughs> I was the first one out of my campground. There was nobody else even awake or moving when I got up and left. You got these people always, people always say, well, ah, I wish I got pictures as good as yours. Well, get up early and stay up late. That's all I have to say. You've got to be out when the sun is just right. It's getting a little bit too high now. Though, um, when it goes behind a cloud, it can help. But I'm about done. There's sun's getting a little too high. There's not much left to shoot in here this time of day. But that's the trick, is get up early. Get up before the sun comes up and be out photographing. And be out photographing as the sun's going down. So.
Isn't that just beautiful? I've just been in here poking around. I'm in uh, the Box Canyon of um, the Grand Trail, I think is what it's called. Just beautiful in here. It's quiet, nobody else is around. Just no sound except for jets, occasional jets flying over and occasional birds. It's really nice. I'm really intrigued with this rock formation right here in front of me. I think I'm gonna have to try to photograph this. Look at this. This is what I started this that pan with. Just just cool. I don't know if I could photograph that and do it justice. Really neat. This is where the canyon ends. Little slot canyon. Pretty cool. That's where I came up from. Pretty neat. Well, this has got to be the prettiest hike in this whole park, the Shakespeare Arch hike. Spectacular. The arch fell in back in 2019, but this is an awesome hike. Let me show you this. So that's where I've come from. Well, I'm going back the way I came. It's a loop and I don't want to go the rest of the loop because it's in the sun. Most of this is in the shade still. <laughs> but you see that it uh, it runs just along the edge of these hoodoos and cliff faces with this great view looking out. Right here it goes between. Look at this. It just goes right between this. Up and up and over this little pass. And just meanders its way all along here. I mean, these are right there. The loop is 1.7 miles, is that what it said? I think so. I went halfway, pretty sure. Look at that. Goes across there and back into the sun. It's like this pretty much the whole way, just up and down and right along the edge of these 
these cliffs and hoodoos. My glasses have fallen down. Oh well. <laughs> Breathing hard. I didn't sleep well last night. Was up like three times and then finally got up about 6.30 went out to start photographing. This has been really fun. I've got to come back here and spend some more time. Come back and spend like three or four days in here camping and just really spending the time I need to to get some of this stuff. Because you only have about an hour in the morning and an hour at night you can photograph. That's what I was saying earlier. You got to be there right as the sun is setting and as the sun's coming up. So I hope you've enjoyed this little adventure in uh, Kodachrome State Park in Utah. It's just outside of uh, Bryce. It borders Bryce. In fact, those red cliffs off in the distance, that's in Bryce Canyon. So, so this, this is a great little area. Um, I hope you enjoyed me uh, showing you how to cook a dinner and a pumpkin. <laughs> Make sure you use a pumpkin pie pumpkin, a small baking pumpkin, not a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. They don't taste good. But the regular pumpkin pie pumpkins taste really good when they're baked like that. So have a really nice squash flavor to them. So, thanks for watching. And uh, stay tuned for my next adventure. And happy trails.